you know what? Do you know what one horsepower is? I do. It's the amount of power you need to lift 75 kilograms, one meter, in just one second. It was defined by James Watt, the guy whose name is Watts. He, he came up with a lot of smart boy stuff. But one horse does not always equal one horsepower. Some measurements have it up to 15 horsepower for every one horse. For example, if you took all of the horses in Europe, there are about 5 million of them, and if you added up all of their potential horsepower, it would equal the power output of the world's solar energy capacity, like photovoltaics and stuff. If you added all that up, it would equal about all the horsepower in Europe by horses. Look, I'm going to be honest, I had nothing after that. Hello and welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections and address them with the flair of a real bovine boy. I also tell you what's coming, you get it, I also tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint! Oh. But first, on the last episode of Because Science, we were wondering just how fast Red Dead Redemption's Dead Eye system is. Woo! Come on! Oh no. Just here, minding my own. Don't look out, man! We are trying to figure out what are the limits of human reaction time? How fast are gunslingers really? And how fast are you? We even gave you some ways to test your own reaction times. I said that if you are 50% faster than the average person, that's going to start approximating what Deadeye would actually be. But what did you have to say? Well, the first dang gum comment is from Rick Pendragon and F and Benjamin Lee, a bunch of people who all posted their reaction times in the comments on the YouTube video. You can watch the video on YouTube, and if you do that, you can pause it at a certain time when I tell you to, and you can use the comment key to advance frame by frame backwards, and using that and the frames of my video, 24 frames per second, you can get your very own reaction time. And it looks like the range is all the way from 170 milliseconds up to about a third of a second which means that like a normal distribution that we'd expect some of you are very very quick and some of you are average most of you are average rather some of you are very very fast and some of you are slower but that's fine you probably also found that the more often you do this test the faster that you get good job I love that we were able to be interactive with this part of it and I want to do more stuff like that except personal interaction just let me roam the pastures in peace our next comment comes from Jeff V, who says, can we hear more in footnotes about, uh, about spinal reflexes or cord-mediated reflexes like pulling a hand, ah, dang it, from a hot stove? Getting pretty good at it. These are reflexes which don't actually fully engage the brain's processing power. Yes, you're absolutely right. There are some stimuli that can circumvent your brain having to identify and react to some stimulus before you actually start moving. This is a startle reaction time, and startle auditory reaction times are incredibly fast. They seem to bypass the brain's processing and just make some sort of pre-programmed movement, like being, oh, or, oh, 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 some pre-programmed movement that was, that was mine, but like jumping up into the air if you hear a noise, like you're scared, you're startled, that produces an even faster reaction time because it's going around all the normal brain processing that would usually occur. So I'm looking at studies here that put that startle auditory reaction time down to like 50 or 60 milliseconds, which is incredibly fast. And if you think about it, we can't prove this, it's hard to prove a lot of evolutionary reasons for things, but if you think about this, we would want to have some kind of system in our brain that could circumvent some slower reaction times. Like if you were walking through the undergrowth and you thought you saw a snake or your brain identified a snake, you don't have time to say, oh, that looks like a snake right there. I wonder if I should move my leg before it strikes me. Oops, it got me, I'm dead. You don't have time to do that. So some stimuli can startle you so much that you get a pre-programmed response like jumping up and oh! jumping up into the air, and that gets down into the times that it takes something like a snake to bite you. A snake can bite you in like 25 to 50 milliseconds, so you would want a reaction time somewhere around there baked into your hardware. Now, we can't prove that that's the reason, but it would make sense, and that's why science is so cool. Oh, ow. 
Our next comment comes from frequent commenter Ninja Bear Films, who says the time it takes or the human reaction time for a baseball player to see a pitch begin to swing the bat in order to hit the ball is longer than the time it takes for the fastball to travel from the pitcher mound to the catcher's mitt, meaning a baseball player needs to predict and commit to swinging before the pitcher throws the ball. A fastest gunslinger in the West then would react in the same way where their experience has trained their instincts to predict and commit to an action before their senses can even see what's coming. I totally agree, and I said this in the video, but experience has a lot to do with reaction times. If you are training yourself to react to something like uh, the sound of a gunshot, if you are an Olympic sprinter or something like that, you can get better and better and better as you train. So it stands to reason, as you say, Ninja Bear Films, that if a gunslinger went through a lot of duels, and I say this in the video, they would be even better. They could train themselves and maybe and I'm just speculating here, maybe get some of their gunslinging ways down into that pre-programmed, pre-motor uh, response where they wouldn't even have to think about it and then they would be even faster. However, there is that weird gunslinger effect that even if you draw first, the person you draw on might be able to react just a little bit faster than you because they're responding to a stimuli rather than self-initiating one. So yeah, if you want to be the fastest hand in the West, you have to actually practice that. Probably, yes. Our next comment comes from Jeff Prismant, who says, Hey Kyle, nice hair. Whoa, what conditioner or shampoo do you use? Additionally, have you ever dyed your beard to match the hair? Look, all right, dudes. I know that you may not want to immediately do something like this, because it's not what you normally do. But you gotta get yourself some hair oil. Get it. I use argan oil. Makes it sheen. Reduces frizz. Makes your hair stay nicer for longer. Gotta get that argan oil. Also, no, I do not dye my beard. I'll never do it. I don't even have a beard right now. I was on a show the other day where a guy said he had long hair and one time an earwig fell out of that and he said it was normal. I said, no, you got dirty hair. Wash your hair. Argan oil right afterwards when it's damp. Not totally dry, damp. You can put a little bit of sheen on it if it's dry. Blow dry. And you know what that was? That was just another installment of our regular occurring series. Oh! My intake. You know what horses have? Manes. The mane on this plane falls mainly on my shoulders. Shut up, it works. Our next comment comes from Philomena Alexandretis, who says, hey Kyle, I have a quick PSA for all the gunslingers out there, <laughs> of which many are watching, probably. Uh, the neurological system responsible for muscle memory that influences the reaction time and quality is the cerebellum, it has three parts, and uh, here she goes on to say, uh, it maintains itself unless there is an ataxia, a cerebral degeneration. And you can get ataxia by alcoholism, traumatic head injuries, heat strokes, vitamin E deficiency, and exposure to heavy toxic metals like the bullets uh, that have lead and mercury in them. So for your future gunslingers out there, I say lay off the booze, wear a hat, stay hydrated, eat nuts, don't brawl without necessity, and avoid heavy metals in your squishy, squishy body. Your cerebellum will thank you for that, and you will maintain your reaction time. So there you have it. If you want to be the fastest hand in the West, you better celebrate that cerebellum. Woo! Come on! Now you may have thought that was the nerdiest comment this week, but nay. The nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I got to give to Tom B. Apocalypse, who says, I tried the reaction time test with the space bar on YouTube five times and got an average of 4.8 frames. That means I was drawing at about 200 milliseconds on average. Nice. I wonder how the use of alcohol could have influenced the effect. So I tried it. I had five shots of a liquid with 40% alcohol content and waited for 15 minutes for it to kick in. For the next five tries, I got an average of eight frames, which makes the reaction time to draw 333 milliseconds. And why did I do that? Because science. Well, Tombi, for drinking five shots of alcohol in what I'm going to assume is a dangerously small amount of time and doing your own little experiment because science, you are indeed a super nerd. <laughs> Hey, but I'm not always right. What did I get wrong this week? Our first correction, kind of, comes from Justin Olson, who says, I asked this on Twitter, but I hope it gets some traction here. When we meet a few days again in footnotes, will you call them Red Dead Redactions? I love you forever, however long that is. Wait, how long is forever? Okay, so, you're shamelessly asked to be on footnotes like many of you are doing, and I'm putting you on. You know why? Because I'm correcting your correction. What would Red Dead Redactions sound like? Here, listen to it. Welcome to Red Dead See, it didn't work because redaction was redacted. Do you see the problem there? 
Anyway, I also love you forever. Our next correction comes from Capcop X, who says, uh, when you spit out the grass, you ask why cowboys uh, chew grass in their mouths. And it says, as far as I know, farmers and cowboys chew grass purely out of the boredom. You know, kind of like when you start to check your teeth with your tongue and snap your fingers or inspect the nails and so on and so forth. Something to keep the mind occupied. I guess the presence of smart devices helps us with not putting random stuff in our mouths or publicly doing obscure things like chewing the nails and such. I think you're right. I offhand said, why do people chew on grass? in westerns, but we have oral fixations and we get bored easily and our hands and our minds want to do stuff and that would just be easily an extension of that. And it's a very pedantic correction, but we'll take it. You know what? This is handling my boredom pretty good. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I got to give to Sean Hufford, who says, Hey Kyle, love it as always. During watching, I actually had the idea of using the pause uh, reaction time test trick right before you proposed it. Well, good for you. <laughs> we are dealing in milliseconds, though, and trying to get a reaction time from a sight stimulus to reaction instrument to the hand. With this pause method, won't the results be slightly skewed against the person, as there is travel time to the space bar before it registers the key press, as well as the electrical signal travel time to the computer and the processing time in the computer of that signal, and then YouTube understanding that command before it pauses. When every millisecond counts, these are variables that should be accounted for, yes? Yes, I should say that even for our reaction time testing, it's never going to be accurate. Because I'm asking you to do this through a video, there are a number of little discrepancies in the processing time that can add up. It's not instantaneous. And so even if you have a very fast reaction time, by the time it gets through YouTube into the computer and stops the video, it will add on necessarily some milliseconds to that reaction time. So it's always going to be slightly skewed. And game designers and other designers of digital media have to think about this when they say uh, you're dealing with a multiplayer first-person shooter. They have to think of how to optimize the design of these games so that this processing time doesn't interact with the players and it makes the game unplayable or unfun. So for that very nerdy correction saying that my reaction time testing for you will never be quite accurate. I mean, we could just subtract some millisecond value from all of them. Anyway, for all of that, you are indeed a super nerd. How? Wow! Now, if you are already subscribed to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com, you are already know what the next episode of Because Science is going to be because you saw it two days earlier than everyone else. And you can get other premium content from Nerdist and Geek and Sundry and myself, like Orbital Redux, which is a live 10-camera sci-fi show that takes place in real time on one set, and it's amazing, and it stars the voice of Spider-Man himself, Yuri Lowenthal, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen before, and you should definitely check it out. But if you haven't subscribed to Alpha just yet, the next episode of Because Science is going to be Fallout's mini-nukes are real. That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are going to delve into the history of miniaturized nuclear weapons. Now, the Fallout mini nuke certainly seems like a sci-fi creation, but nuclear weapons engineers have actually got surprisingly close to a mini nuke-like design, even something that you can hold with your own two hands, and that's it. So for all that information and history, tune in to this week's episode. It's gonna be rad. So, go watch the latest episode about Gunslinger Reaction Time if you haven't yet. Leave me all of your nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science. Look, it's right here. And at because science on Instagram and Twitter, I will also take your ideas for future episodes. Sometimes I use them. We also have new merchandise. If you are subscribed to Alpha, you get a discount on that merchandise. We also have a subreddit. And don't forget, not everything happens for a reason. The universe doesn't care what you're doing or who you are or the actions that you take. We are a hairless primate on a tiny piece of rock in a nearly infinite, or might as well be to us, universe. Instead, everything has a reason for happening. And we discover those reasons through science. Look, that, that, that kind of outlook can kind of make people think uh, nihilistically about the world that nothing matters. But in a universe where nothing matters, this is what matters, interaction. Everything matters when nothing matters. Every, everything you love, everything you hate, every conversation that you have, every person that you meet, it all matters because nothing does. It's all on the level playing field. So make it matter. Put it on a t-shirt.